Listening Task 1. You are going to listen to five texts. For each of them, answer the two questions given. Mark the correct answer A, B, or C. You have 20 seconds to look through the questions. You will then hear the recording twice. When he was working in the burger van, Ed had to be reliable and turn up for work on time. He also had to be polite to the customers. However, he didn't have to take much responsibility as his boss dealt with the money. He didn't need to get up early because the van opened at 11 a.m. When he wanted to, he could even take a day off work. Now that he's training to be a chef, it's very different. He has to manage a team, even though he finds it difficult to tell people what to do. It's also a very high pressure job, so he must work to tight deadlines. However, he doesn't have to work outside anymore, and he can take home really nice food when the restaurant has closed. When he was working in the burger van, Ed had to be reliable and turn up for work on time. He also had to be polite to the customers. However, he didn't have to take much responsibility as his boss dealt with the money. He didn't need to get up early because the van opened at 11 a.m. When he wanted to, he could even take a day off work. Now that he's training to be a chef, it's very different. He has to manage a team. Even though he finds it difficult to tell people what to do, it's also a very high pressure job, so he must work to tight deadlines. However, he doesn't have to work outside anymore, and he can take home really nice food when the restaurant has closed. Text 2. So, yesterday we took the train from La Paz, Bolivia, into Peru. Stopping at Puno, and today we are going to visit the floating islands on Lake Titicaca. I can't wait. Ever since I first heard about these islands in a geography class many years ago, I've wanted to see them. Actually, I don't really enjoy boat trips, but I'm sure the water on the lake will be quite calm, as it's a clear sunny day. It's quite cold though, so I'm going to take an extra sweater to keep warm. I'm really interested in finding out more about how people live there. I believe we'll be able to ask them questions through a guide. I'd love to know what people eat. A lot of fish, I suppose. I'd also like to know what they think the future holds for them and their families. Do they think their children will stay on the islands? What effect is technology going to have on their lives? I know they already have solar power and even black and white TVs. Just thought, it would be great to have some photos for the blog. So I'll take my camera too. Just hope I don't drop it in the water. So yesterday we took the train from La Paz, Bolivia, into Peru, stopping at Puno, and today we are going to visit the floating islands on Lake Titicaca. I can't wait. Ever since I first heard about these islands in a geography class many years ago. I've wanted to see them. Actually, I don't really enjoy boat trips, but I'm sure the water on the lake will be quite calm, as it's a clear, sunny day. It's quite cold, though, so I'm going to take an extra sweater to keep warm. I'm really interested in finding out more about how people live there. I believe we'll be able to ask them questions through a guide. I'd love to know what people eat. A lot of fish, I suppose. I'd also like to know what they think the future holds for them and their families. 
Do they think their children will stay on the islands? What effect is technology going to have on their lives? I know they already have solar power and even black and white TVs. Just thought, it would be great to have some photos for the blog, so I'll take my camera too. Just hope I don't drop it in the water. Text 3 It was the end of September and a beautiful sunny day. Autumn is the most beautiful season here, and the leaves on the trees were beginning to turn golden in places. As we climbed through the forest, we enjoyed the fresh air and the smell of the soil. Moving slowly up the steep winding path, we came to the edge of the forest, and suddenly we could see a gorgeous lake at the edge of a mountain range in the distance. The peaks and cliffs of the mountains were partly covered in snow, even at this time of the year. The scenery was just amazing. It was the end of September and a beautiful sunny day. Autumn is the most beautiful season here, and the leaves on the trees were beginning to turn golden in places. As we climbed through the forest, we enjoyed the fresh air and the smell of the soil. Moving slowly up the steep winding path, we came to the edge of the forest, and suddenly we could see a gorgeous lake at the edge of a mountain range in the distance. The peaks and cliffs of the mountains were partly covered in snow, even at this time of the year. The scenery was just amazing. Text 4 We had been walking all day, and it was slowly getting dark. We had seen gorgeous mountains with lovely greenery, refreshing waterfalls, and clear pools amongst the rocks. We had enjoyed playing in the pools in the hot sunshine, but at the end of the day we had descended back into the valley. Walking down towards where we were staying for the night, the sunset was amazing, beautiful and red, with the silhouettes of the palm trees in the distance. I don't think I've ever seen such a beautiful and unusual landscape. We had been walking all day, and it was slowly getting dark. We had seen gorgeous mountains with lovely greenery, refreshing waterfalls, and clear pools amongst the rocks. We had enjoyed playing in the pools in the hot sunshine, but at the end of the day we had descended back into the valley. Walking down towards where we were staying for the night, the sunset was amazing, beautiful and red, with the silhouettes of the palm trees in the distance. I don't think I've ever seen such a beautiful and unusual landscape. Text 5. Can you tell me about your problem? Well, I'm a hoarder. I just can't throw things away. So my house is full of stuff. I'm starting to run out of space. What kind of stuff do you keep? <laughs> Everything. Newspapers, old yoghurt pots, clothes, toys. Old yoghurt pots? Why do you keep those? Well, because they might come in useful one day. Well, you know, I might decide to grow plants in them. But don't they take up a lot of space? Where do you keep them? In my shower cubicle. Oh, you're joking. No, seriously. I've got a load of newspapers too, going back to 1995. They're in a shed in the garden. <laughs> so your house must be pretty full then. <laughs> There's no room for anything. Our front garden is full of old machines like dishwashers and fridges. Oh, what a nightmare! And how does your wife feel about this? Well, to be honest, she's not very happy. But what can I do about it? Can you tell me about your problem? Well, I'm a hoarder. I just can't throw things away. 
So my house is full of stuff. I'm starting to run out of space. What kind of stuff do you keep? <laughs> Everything: newspapers, old yogurt pots, clothes, toys. Old yogurt pots. Why do you keep those? Well, because they might come in useful one day. Well, you know, I might decide to grow plants in them. But don't they take up a lot of space? Where do you keep them? In my shower cubicle. Oh, you're joking. No, seriously. I've got a load of newspapers too, going back to 1995. They're in a shed in the garden. <laughs> so your house must be pretty full then. <laughs> There's no room for anything. Our front garden is full of old machines like dishwashers and fridges. Oh, what a nightmare! And how does your wife feel about this? Well, to be honest, she's not very happy. Well, what can I do about it? Listening task two. Listen to the text, and for each question, mark the correct answer A, B, or C. I found a really fascinating example in my research on ancient mysteries: the Nazca Lines of Peru. What are they? I've never heard of the Nazca Lines. The Nazca civilization existed in southern Peru from 200 BCE to about 600 CE. The ruins of a couple different villages are still there, and archaeologists have found pottery, jewelry, and textiles with very detailed designs. But the Nazca people are most famous for their geoglyphs. Geoglyphs? What are they? Oh, I think I read an article about them. Aren't they giant pictures of animals like monkeys and birds? They're so large you can only see them from an airplane. Actually, according to a number of sources, they can be seen from the tops of the surrounding hills. Some of the Nazca lines are shaped like animals, while others are very complex geometric designs. That sounds amazing. Why are they there? There are several theories about their purpose. Some scholars say the lines were created to match constellations, patterns in the stars, whereas others think they may have been roads for carrying water to their fields. Others say it would have been impossible for the Nazca to come up with images that large without the use of modern technology like aircraft. What do you think? Well, I'm not totally sure, but there's evidence to suggest that the lines were paths traveled by the Nazca people during religious celebrations. Interesting. How did the Nazca make the lines? Good question. Again, no one is sure. But researchers have theorized that the Nazca were able to use simple tools and processes to create the designs. Archaeologists have located wooden stakes in the ground at the end of some lines, which supports that theory. Right. The article I read explained that they most likely made the lines by removing the reddish pebbles from the top of the soil to reveal the lighter dirt underneath. Well, whatever the method or the reason, it sounds absolutely fascinating. I want to find out more. I found a really fascinating example in my research on ancient mysteries: the Nazca Lines of Peru. What are they? I've never heard of the Nazca Lines. The Nazca civilization existed in southern Peru from 200 BCE to about 600 CE. The ruins of a couple different villages are still there, and archaeologists have found pottery, jewelry, and textiles with very detailed designs. But the Nazca people are most famous for their geoglyphs. Geoglyphs? What are they? Oh, I think I read an article about them. Aren't they giant pictures of animals like monkeys and birds? They're so large you can only see them from an airplane. Actually, according to a number of sources, they can be seen from the tops of the surrounding hills. Some of the Nazca lines are shaped like animals, while others are very complex geometric designs. That sounds amazing. Why are they there? There are several theories about their purpose. Some scholars say the lines were created to match constellations, patterns in the stars, whereas others think they may have been roads for carrying water to their fields. Others say it would have been impossible for the Nazca to come up with images that large without the use of modern technology like aircraft. What do you think? Well, I'm not totally sure, 
But there's evidence to suggest that the lines were paths traveled by the Nazca people during religious celebrations. Interesting. How did the Nazca make the lines? Good question. Again, no one is sure, but researchers have theorized that the Nazca were able to use simple tools and processes to create the designs. Archaeologists have located wooden stakes in the ground at the end of some lines, which supports that theory. Right. The article I read explained that they most likely made the lines by removing the reddish pebbles from the top of the soil to reveal the lighter dirt underneath. Well, whatever the method or the reason, it sounds absolutely fascinating. I want to find out more.